We got cracks, we got smashes, we got dents. I feel like maybe someone upset their significant other with this one. I paid $150 for this very broken Xbox Series X. I don't even know if this thing turns on though, so let's plug it in and see what it does. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Oh, and the power button just pushes in with, there's not actually a button behind it. Let's try it with the disc. Oh, that, <laughs> that's just solid right there. There's nothing there for the disc to go into. Okay, so let's get this taken apart and see if this is something we can fix. In order to get this apart, I'm gonna be using an iFixit ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit is one of my favorites. For a great price, you get an entire bit and driver set. This will open almost anything out there. Then we got pry tools, tweezers, and then over here we have more pry tools. We've got a suction cup and an ESD wrist strap. There's also more pry tools to go here. I have these out on my repair bench already. We need to pull out the iFixit driver as well as a T8 security Torx. Then we can start getting this Xbox apart. Okay, here we go. Whew, that's some crazy damage. Got damage to the board here, over here. Surprisingly, the HDMI port, at least so far, looks fine. A lot of damage to the heatsink right here, a little bit right here. There was something rattling around near the fan, but I'm not sure. Oh, I think I see what it is. <laughs> this is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Come on. Ah! That's the problem. That's what was rattling around. The entire fan has just totally broken out. Look at this. Never seen that before. I think it's safe to say this fan we will not be reinstalling. <laughs> oh, and then we have this green piece that goes down in there. That's been totally broken out. Something I've also never seen before. All right, and disk drive is out. Got a big old dent right here. And what else? Anything else going on? Yep, another dent. So this is not in good condition. Got a piece broken out of the front right here. So I'm not sure if this is going to be salvageable, but we'll open this later. All right, now we can get the main board out or the main board and the power supply and the heat sink out, I guess, the whole sandwich. But let's take a look inside here first. Power button doesn't look broken, but I think we're gonna have to replace this shell because there's just no way to fix some of this stuff. So I'm actually gonna take the power button out. All right, let's get this out. Okay, well, that's a problem. The ribbon cable is just torn right down there. This right here is the cable. Let's remove it so that's out of here. We'll need to replace at least this ribbon cable. The board actually doesn't look too bad. I think the board itself might be okay. But I'm just gonna get rid of this case because it does need to be replaced. All right, and now let's take a better look at the sandwich. The power supply's got a big old dent right there. Um, this board over here, the little Wi-Fi board, that's gonna need to be replaced. It's got a big old dent right here. The metal piece that covers over the board right here is bent up and pushed in. So we'll need to remove that and see if there's any damage to the board under there. Heat sink needs to be replaced. There's no way to fix that, unfortunately. I feel like maybe we should try and turn it on first and see if this thing will turn on as is. Let's give it a try. All right, we have our smashed up disk drive and we have a power button attached. Now this is not something I would recommend any anyone ever does at home or anything, especially with the power supply. Uh, damage like this, so don't try anything like this at home. Here we go. Tronics Fix and iFixit are celebrating International Repair Day on October 21. International Repair Day is an entire day celebrating all the things that make repair so important. It's about making repair visible and recognizing the importance of being able to fix our stuff. It's about trying to fix our own devices instead of throwing them away and doing what the manufacturers want you to do, going out and buying another one. If you want to commit to fixing more things, go to ifixit.com pledge. Not only does iFixit offer amazing tools, repair guides, and a repair community, they also support the right for you to repair your stuff. If you also care about that, be sure to sign the pledge. I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. Here we go. 
plugged into power. I hear some buzzing noise out of the power supply. So let's see what happens. Yep, just no power to anything. Although, it could be this connector down here. If we put pressure on that, still nothing. Let's try the disk drive. Nope, no power there either. So I do suspect probably a problem with this power supply. I think the next thing we need to do is just get this all torn down and just have a good inspection of everything. Okay, and here we go with this little board. Oh yeah, that, those capacitors have just been crushed. So this board is definitely toast. All right, and here we go with the metal plate. See if that shows us anything. Actually, not really. Most of this looks pretty good in here. That's good news. All right, and power supply. Oh, can almost come off. I always forget that screw. All right, now the power supply can come off. Nothing rattling around in there, but that is a pretty big dent we got right there. So that could have dented down into some of the stuff on the board there. And this board also needs to be replaced. All right, and metal plate comes off. And I don't really see any obvious damage there. Good news. Yeah, that board definitely needs to be replaced. This is some of the antennas right here, the Wi-Fi antennas, so... Gotta replace that one too. Okay, this cable mostly looks pretty good. So let's pull this board out. Check the other side. And... It actually looks okay. I do need to have a look at this connector a little more closely. But other than that, it doesn't look too bad. So here is the connector that we're having problems with. You can see it's just loose. There's a little plastic piece that goes under this metal tab on each side, and that looks to be to have just broken off. How these are supposed to work is the metal or the plastic piece is supposed to be there and then this is a metal locking tab. I might be able to fix it by using some glue to glue it down, but I feel like that's just not going to be as strong as I'd like it to. And then I just kind of broke it anyway. So I'm going to replace this. I'm just going to get one off of a donor board and desolder it from there, desolder this one and then solder on the new one. And there we go. So here we have the bad connector, the one that was broken. You can see the little broken piece right here, or you can see where the piece was broken off. This is the good one. And here you can see what piece was broken off. There's like a plastic piece right here that just broke right off. And that's why this won't stay connected or it won't stay down on the board. So let's get rid of this one and install this one onto our board. Fume extractor on. Soldering irons are nice and hot. Now it's time to flux it up. Good amount of flux along here. When in doubt, add more flux. So I'm gonna come in and start out with my micro pencil. And my goal here is to get a couple of these pads, these pins soldered to keep this port in place. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my larger iron with a good amount of fresh solder on it. Okay, that's not going anywhere. That is actually looking pretty good. I need to clean this up. Let's see if the locking tab is working. Oh yeah, that works great. One of the problems with these is if too much flux gets down in here, it can actually get on the cable and kind of cause a connection problem. So I want to make sure this is nice and clean. That's pretty good. Let's try cable in this. See how it does. Oh, look at that, that locking tab works good. Let's push it down and see if we can pull the cable out. Yep, there we go. So that job is done. Let's see what else, if anything, needs to be done on this board. Oh, we got one loose solder joint right here on this guy. Oh, we got a torn pad on the board. All right, and then I'm gonna bend it so it sits about where it should. And then I'm gonna use some conformal coating 
and this is liquid enough that I can put it here and it's gonna flow underneath the port. I'm gonna add some all along here. There we go. Now I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry and we'll have a look at that in a little bit after it's fully dried. All right, and since we're already this far, we might as well remove this and have a look at the board on the bottom. Okay, and all of this actually looks pretty good so far. Got a little bit of a broken piece off of this little, uh, I think it's an inductor. All right, and now this board, we can pry up. Oh, there we go. Let's see what this board looks like. Got a little bit of crunch spot over here, but it doesn't cause any problems. That's just the ground plane on the edge there, so that's not an issue. I mean, obviously this is an issue. We definitely need to install the perfect amount of thermal paste, but let's have a look and just make sure there's nothing we're missing. I don't see any problems on this board at all. Clearly we're gonna need a new heat sink because there's not gonna be anything we can do to really fix this issue. We could try and bend these all back, but it's just not gonna go well. I do have another one of these already, so I'm gonna get that and then we'll install the board onto that heat sink. This heat sink actually was from a video I did a long time ago where one of these chips uh, basically overheated and kind of blew out. It's still got a little bit of markings on there from that. So what we need to do first is apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. And there we go. Now we can get this thing reassembled enough to test and see if it'll turn on now. and a known working power supply. Since this piece is so bent right here, I'm actually gonna replace this piece too. Got a bunch of those laying around, so might as well. And unfortunately, it's not really gonna show how strong this is, because this is gonna cover it up. And this is not quite all the way dry yet, so I guess you'll just have to take my word on it. All right, now we just got a bunch more screws to install get the disk drive installed, and then we should be able to test it. Okay, we've got it plugged into power. Let's see if anything has power. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so that means that the power supply might have been good on the other one. I guess I'll have to get my meter out and start testing and see where we have voltage and see what exactly is going on on this board. I just realized something. This cable does not go on like that. This cable, comes from the front of the console, goes on like this. I know this. I don't know why I was putting it in here upside down. Okay, with the power cable installed correctly, now let's see if it'll start up. And here we go. Eject, and the power button. The white light stays on for now. So far it's looking good, but we gotta deal with that disk drive. So this is very bent on the top here. I think we just need to start by taking it apart. It's bent here, bent over here. Let's take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside and see if we think there's any hope of saving it. Oh yeah, that's not good. The whole board is bent right here. This whole thing is bent. This is broken. This could actually be a major problem because even if we replace the drive, we have to have this board because the board is married to the motherboard of the console. I mean, it, it might be okay. Let's see what we have going on down here. Yep, got a bent metal plate right here. Let's just take this whole thing out. Okay, I'm not gonna be using this drive again, so let's do this the easy way. There we go. Yep, this whole thing is bent right here and there's just not gonna be any way to bend that back in a way that it's going to continue to work. So what we need to do is remove this board and then we'll install this board on a replacement drive. And if we're lucky, this board will work. It definitely was bent, so we may end up replacing some of the chips on this onto the replacement board but let's give it a try how it is and see what happens. Just need to desolder these two wires. So I'll come in and add just a little bit of flux. And black wire. 
red wire. The nice thing about these boards is they're even marked with a B and an R. And I'm going to install this into this disk drive that came from an Xbox Series X with a faulty motherboard. Now just three screws, and then I need to desolder those wires, and we can install the new one. And obviously we do need to uh, remove those ribbon cables. Okay, hopefully this one is going to work. It'd be really nice if I didn't have to replace those chips, but I mean, if we do, we do. It's not that difficult. Just kind of annoying. Let's install it the right side up. That would be helpful. And here we go. Let's see if it'll turn on and pull the disc in. Turns on. Disc goes in. Does it spin? I don't hear it spinning. There we go. We got it spinning now. So far so good. I don't know if it actually reads the disc, but it at least spins. So I'm going to get this all put back together into the case. Then we'll see if it'll turn on and show up on the screen and play the disc. Okay, and will it start up? Power, good. The fan work? Not yet. And nothing on the screen. Oh, we got a fan. Black screen. Uh, yeah. That looks amazing. So we got it working, but is it going to play a disc? I'm going to get into the system, and then we'll test this disc. Okay, disc is going in. Let's see if it'll play. Spinning up, good. Oh, there we go. So it looks like this Xbox Series X, even though it was in such bad condition, we finally do have it working after quite a bit of work. If you want to see a video where I bought an Xbox Series X for only $100 that was dropped on concrete to see if I could fix it, I'll leave a link for that video up on your screen now, so come hang out with me over there and see if I was able to fix it. Don't forget to take the International Repair Day pledge at ifixit.com slash pledge. I'll put a link for that in the description that'll take you right there. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.